Hi everyone and welcome to Double Your Sales Now. Today we're gonna to talk about how to double your sales this year through networking. And I'm so excited about this topic because I think there's a ton of myths out there. I think there's a ton of misinformation and we have an amazing networking expert here today. We have Mr. Travis Sims. Travis, hello, welcome to the show. Hi. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Not only are you a networking expert, but you you have you've founded a networking organization, which we're going to talk about today. So, I just want to remind our listeners: take out a pen, piece of paper. There's going to be golden nuggets that you'll want to remember, and you're going to want to come back to. So, I just want to encourage you to write those notes down. I want to thank our listeners all over the world, and I, you know, I wanted to mention our this show, Double Your Sales Now, um, hit number 111 in the US in marketing, which for us is a big deal, a huge deal. And I just wanna thank you all it's because you guys are listening, you're downloading the show, you're telling your friends, you're leaving us reviews. And I'm just super grateful because we want this information to get out there. I mean, it's, you know, as we're recording the show, it's kind of an interesting time in the world with, you know, coronavirus and, you know, we're in an election year and there can be, especially as entrepreneurs, there can be so much fear out there and I just, I want you to, I want this show to be a safe place for you to come and just um, get uplifted again, get re-inspired and get refocused on your goals because the 2020 can be a phenomenal breakthrough year for you. So thank you for listening. Stay with us. Keep coming back. If you haven't yet gotten our free gift, it's a simple PDF. I like simple, easy, six secrets to double your sales. It's a PDF. You can go to salescoachnow.com forward slash gift and get that for yourself. Feel free to share it with your sales team members if you have them as well. I would personally love to partner with you on your next event, conference, or sales training session. I love delivering keynotes and breakouts. I just, I just did a couple breakouts last week. It was so much fun to be um, with people who are, are working on their sales goals and inspired to get to the next level. So definitely go to Ursula Minchis, U-R-S-U-L-A-M-E-N-T-J-E-S.com to see all my keynotes and uh, it has information there on how to book me. Also, because you're a podcast listener, you receive a super special price to come to one of our sales camp courses. We offer 10 public sales camps a year uh, between Minnesota and San Diego. And you can email us at contact at salescoachnow.com and we will send you the information on how you can get a special price for listening. And we've gotten, we've now had listeners from, you know, all over the country coming out because of that. So take advantage of it, especially if you just want to get re-inspired and get back on track this year. Finally, if you're enjoying the show, leave us a review on iTunes. It helps other people learn about the show and figure out if it's a good fit for them. And we thank you in advance for that. Now, I'm super excited to introduce our guest, Mr. Travis Sims. He is the CEO of AGC Accelerated Global Connections, the fastest growing business networking organization in the Twin Cities. Travis is a networking expert, motivational speaker, and thought leader committed to helping you become a better person, leader, and networker. For over 15 years, Travis has been teaching and coaching the best business leadership minds across the country how to do networking, build networks, and create a community. So you guys know if you've been listening for a while, we're gonna talk about networking. He's gonna share some of the, his expert tips. But before we get there, we're gonna ask Travis about his, his business trajectory. So Travis, I wanna start uh, just by having you share a little bit about your story and your background. And, and then uh, to also share one limiting belief you had about sales in the very beginning, whenever your career started. Okay, let's start there. <laughs> okay, uh, super glad to be here. Thanks for having me. A um, little bit about me. I, uh, I started out in the professional career as a magician. And that was, oh, yeah, I toured I all over that. the country. I did, I toured all over the country. Uh, I performed on the Oprah Winfrey show. I performed in audiences in front of 3,000 people. I mainly played fairs, festivals, casinos, theme parks, big illusion shows. And back in 2007, 2008, the economy crashed and the entertainment world that. <laughs> collapsed. I mean, it completely collapsed. And I lost everything. I went from what would be the height of my career and money was flowing, couldn't print it fast enough to end bankruptcy, lost my house, lost my business, lost my wife, lost everything all in one just big hit. Wow. And I sat there thinking, you know, the sky is falling and what am I going to do? And it was networking that lifted me out of that hole. It, uh, the old saying, it's not what you do, it's who you know is an absolutely true statement. 
And I started networking and meeting people and changed the way uh, that I do business. And it uh, built my career into what I've become today. So that's, that's kind of where, where I started out. I, I spent uh, 14 years in working for a global networking organization. And then I, I developed my own in the last year. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. And, you know, we talk a lot about the recession. My husband and I, we were in California during that interesting time and owned a lot of real estate, owned part of a real estate company. I had my company and um, faced a lot of those same challenges. And, uh, but we're here, right? We're here. So we're proof that even, you know, tough times can't take us out as long as we come back. So going back and, and let's, let, let's talk about, so you, just, you made the decision to start this networking organization. Did you have any limiting beliefs in the beginning about doing that or any places that you felt like you kind of were like, huh, oh, like, is this going to work? I mean, you know, at the, on the W Sales Now show, we like to talk about those places that these successful entrepreneurs like you got stuck. So anything there that you want to share? <laughs> it's, it's funny you ask that because I, I'm a person that, I have such a, a visionary mindset that I'm always focused on the positive to, to stop and think about the, the negative. And, and I'll tell you, uh, it was about halfway through the year. Um, you know, you're starting out, I'm member number one of a brand new organization with a brand new brand. No one knows who we are, what we do, how we're different, why they should care, should they come. And I was no longer working with a brand that was global, that had been around for 35 plus years, that had all this recognition and, and in the marketplace. And so I'm about halfway through the year and we hadn't reached our, uh, we were still bleeding money. I mean, this is a first year business. Oh, yeah. And so we're still bleeding money. My overhead is really high and we're gaining traction. We're gaining members, but I'm like, are we ever going to get there? <laughs> What do we got to do? And I started to go, oh my gosh, I risked everything. I bet the farm on this. I mean, I, like I, I didn't go out and finance this. I didn't find partners. I took my savings and I put it in this and I risked it all. Wow. And I thought, I'm going to have to go get a job. I'm going to have to, to go do something else while I do this. And, and then, um, I started looking at what could I do to not only grow, but what could I do to cut some of my overhead? And it was uh, moving, the, the big key component for us was moving from uh, really high paid spaces to co-working spaces. I found that my audience didn't have to be in the country club uh, to, to enjoy the event. It just needed to be a professional space for them to meet in. And so when I did that, it immediately changed uh, the trajectory of what we, were, what we were doing and helped us become profitable because we're, we're working with in an environment where we shared the same target market between our organization and the co-working spaces. So, so there's my limiting belief and how we came around it uh, as well. Yeah, well, let's unpack that for a moment because there's some big pieces in there. I, I work, you know, we work with a lot of clients who their overhead is just way too high and it can be, it can become, you know, it's, I get it. Like, it's kind of an ego thing. It's a brand thing. It's a, like, it's hard, it's hard to say where, where do I, like, where do I cut? I, and, you know, I had a client one time who had 10 people on her team, full-timers, didn't need 10 people on her team. It sounded good, you know, but it was expensive. And so this is such a valuable lesson for, for all of us. And especially in a time when, you know, the economy is doing interesting things, the world's doing interesting things, you, you want to be prepared. And, you know, we, we've had that same experience in, in my own company of, you know, what kind of space is nice. And we used to have, we used to invest in really expensive hotels for all of our events. And it was really nice. And then I thought, you know what? I want to be closer to my home. I, there were a lot of things I wanted to shift. I wanted to cut some costs. And we found this amazing boutique hotel who not only had nice space, but catered to us, went above and beyond with their food, like did extra things that we didn't even ask for. And I thought, wow. And so for all of our listeners, I just want to put an exclamation point here on, you know, it's okay to shift. It's okay to cut costs to become more profitable because you can have a seven figure business that's not making it and could be losing money, right? So you're not moving in that right direction. So it's powerful. And, and that it's, it's okay to really pivot and course correct and to recognize that. 
when when maybe you don't want to. But you guys well, did it, so I love it. Yeah. And Ursula, just to 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 build on that, you know, you went from uh, going into these spaces that maybe could even care less if you're there because they have so many other businesses coming in to a place that values what you're bringing them and want and what appreciates that you're there and wants to cater to you and, and that's exactly what we did as well and so that yeah. that's awesome to hear yeah it's great i can like this is gonna be a breakthrough for people who are listening today so travis after you you had that pivot point I'm guessing things shifted for you. What did you, like, you didn't go get the job, I'm guessing. Like, what did you believe then? I mean, you held on, <laughs> you cut costs, you got profitable, and then, and then what did you start to see and what started to show up for you? Yeah, it, it um, I've, always, I've always believed this, and it, it really is about aligning with the right people. Uh, it's about building the right teams. It's about building the right relationships. It's about connecting with the right people, which is why I love networking and why I love connecting others. And so when we are, were able to start aligning with co-working spaces, that was huge for us. And uh, we've, we've been really able to build on that. And so meaning that not just building a relationship with one co-working space, but with multiple. And then uh, we just signed a deal with a co-working space that's one of the largest in the country, and which will allow us to scale to the next city. So when we open in Chicago, when we open in Texas, when we open in New York, we already have locations to go to. We don't have to find them. We don't have to go through the hurdles that we previously did of finding the right spaces and paying the big overhead costs. You know, we know exactly where we're going. And we even just recently, this just happened, I'm so excited about it, is that we had a co-working space that contacted us and said, we will pay you to come and bring your audience to right, us. Right, right. Because now we have an audience and, and we, we have value and we can bring that audience to them. So no longer will we be paying, no longer are we paying, they're now paying us to come, which is right. a real pivot moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great that's a great day that's a great i mean a great day and it makes sense because it, it's a great point for you know our listeners i i get a lot of clients who want to launch an event you know or they want to have a workshop somewhere and their first thought is going to cost me so much money when i first started i partnered with everybody i partnered and some spaces were free because we were bringing people in through the door and so and now you're getting paid to bring people in through the door so for those of us for those of you who are listening Space does not have to cost a lot of money. Nice space does not have to cost a lot of money. In fact, when you start to set up partnerships and build relationships, we're gonna talk about, apparently they can even pay you. <laughs> I love it. So we, we have a set of core values in AGC and our number one core value is selfless service. It's about helping others. Our number two core value is dynamic collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, today's world is all about the teamwork. If you can team with other people, you will scale faster. Yes. And I'm hoping we're going to talk about that because I think for some that's, they're not quite sure what that, how that could show up. Before we get to the, your tips though, uh, I want you to share your top two strategies. What are the top two strategies that AGC has used to really grow the organization and continue to grow it? Number one thing that I, I think that we created that is really uh, different than, than anything else in the marketplace for, for networking is we created an experience, uh, it, it's a learning experience. And so Ursula, you were one of our keynotes, one of our AGC talks, and it's not just a networking event, it's similar to a TED Talks, but it has networking built around it. And what I, what I love about this is that when we come and we learn together, it creates an experience together, a shared experience, a, almost a bonding moment. It gives us something to talk about and relate to and to uh, uh, even further the conversation with after the event on. So you have that shared experience together. That's, that's probably a number one thing that I, I think uh, has made a really, really difference uh, for us uh, in the organization. Uh, number two thing is what happens after that. Uh, most of the time when you attend a networking event, you walk away with a fistful of cards and very little results from it. And you attend all these events and you do it over and over again, doing the same thing with little results. And so the last portion of our event, we have three components. The first is 45 minutes of open networking. You're going to connect with people. You're going to um, do appetizers and drinks and exchange cards. Then you're going to get motivated in the center. The last portion is the take action portion. 
And that is, who did you meet in the front of this event that you now want to set intentional time to get to know each other? Whether that's over coffee, uh, over lunch, or whatever it is, but set some appointments before you leave the event. That's your goal. Now, it's not a time to go and hard sell the person uh, across the table from you, but it's about taking this one-time connection to a starting point for a relationship. And we're very intentional about that and we teach that to our members. Got it. So, it's the, so first of all, thank you for inviting me to be one of your keynotes. It was a lot of fun yeah. and you give speakers a lot of value, which I want to talk about at the end in case someone would like to speak at one of your events because I'm oh, sure, sure someone will ask me that question. Um, so it's that 40 minutes, 45 minutes of networking, and then we get motivated together and have that collective experience. And then we take action and set appointments. Now, you and I, we both are big believers in let's get our, our calendar in the moment. Because what we know is that when we leave with that pile of business cards, we forget very quickly or fear gets in the way or we think, well, Travis said that, but he probably doesn't really want, we make up stories about people not wanting to connect with us. So what would you consider, like when you go to an event, how many appointments do you want to intentionally have to build a relationship before you leave? Like, what would you feel like is a good event for you? Oh, that's a great question. Um, our, our events typically see somewhere between 75 and 100 people, depending on, on the event. And uh, people come into the room because of these huge crowds. I mean, they, they, that's what they're coming for. Like, oh my gosh, there's gonna be 100 people there. I wanna be there. I'm gonna be able to really expand my business. But you come into the room for these big crowds but our members stay for the handful of relationships that they make that make a difference in their business. And so when I attend an event, uh, whether it's mine or it's one of uh, another organization that I belong to, because I, I do a lot of networking and I don't think there's one style that fits all. And I think you should be uh, diversifying how you network. Uh, so I look for three connections. Whenever I, whenever I attend an event, I'm like, who are the three people that I most need to talk to that we can make a difference for each other, help one another, whether that's just starting a relationship point, whether that's an opportunity to develop a referral relationship, or even the potential of uh, being able to do business together. But I'm looking for three connections. That's great. Which leads me to my next question. We are, there's a story I think we can tell as entrepreneurs that we're starved for time. We all have the same 24 hours, right? But there's kind of this belief that we can come up with. And so there can be a belief like, I don't have, I don't have time to network or how can I get three more appointments on my calendar? What's your secrets or secret for making sure there's time available on the calendar? Do you, do you block out certain time every week? Like how do you, and how do you yeah. systematize that? You know that, uh, that we've heard the saying, like uh, if you're not, if you're not networking, you're not working. Right. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about networking is it gives you an opportunity to really leverage your time. Very busy, very successful people find time to network. And it's because you, I, can, I can spend this time alone on my computer and I'm doing today's work. But we want you preparing for next week's work, next month's work, the next quarter's work. And, and you can maximize your time by, by attending events where there's lots of people to help you make those next few connections. So it, for me, it's a planned exercise. It's like going to the gym for me. You know, I, I, put, it in, I put it in my activities and I'm like, all right. I, almost like um, each day, you know, I, I have time set apart for here's where I'm going to do writing. Here's where I'm going to do reading. Here's where I'm going to make meaningful connections with people. And, and that meaningful connection could be this, uh, this uh, podcast between you and I and your, and your listeners. Uh, it could be that I'm going, uh, I did a, a conference call with some people beforehand, or it might be the event that I'm attending. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. And, and just making it a priority, putting it on the calendar. Any advice on, because I get this question a lot, and any advice on how many networking groups I should be in? Or, because um, we talk about, it's always good to have an association. It's good to have a group that can give you some kind of referrals or where it's intentional. It's always great to be part of a charity um, yeah. and talk about that. But what's, what's your opinion on this? Oh, you, you, you nailed it. Um, there, there are five types of networking. So you've got the open, like chamber, like AGC, first Thursdays, network after work, um, more than one person per profession. You've got closed contacts like Master Networks, BNI, Latif, Gold Star, uh, lots of those where it's one person per profession. They're intentional, they're meeting style. Then you've got um, 
service organizations where you're giving back to your community, you're helping others, you, you don't join those to grow your business, you join them to give back. So like Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions Clubs, and so on. Associations where you're uh, working with other individuals in your industry and you're sharing ideas and you're sharpening saws and you're helping one another. And then online, uh, social, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so on. So the leading experts, I think, say uh, to do three uh, different types of, of networking. So maybe one open, one closed, and one service. And for people like myself and probably you and others uh, that are listening, uh, we all want to be represented online because that's where you're creating big brand awareness and you're getting your message out, you're broadcasting. Uh, but I, I hire people to do that for me so I can put my real focus on working those face-to-face -face avenues. Got it. So three, we were, we were in line with the experts. That's awesome. Absolutely in line. Yes. So you, I want to save time to make sure we get these tips. You're an expert in networking and really in making super valuable connections between people. What we, I also know, you know, you, you offer different types of workshops, but what are the top two to three networking strategies or tips that you teach your clients and members? Sure. Uh, first of all, I'll start with um, that you want to get prepared before you go. And, and so number one, prepare before you go. The first thing people are going to do upon meeting you, if they have, um, if you have a good connection and let's say, all right, I met Ursula. She's fantastic. Uh, we had a great interaction. I go back to my office or I go back to my home. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Google you. <laughs> I'm either going to Google you or I'm going to look you up on social media and I'm going to uh, see a little bit more about you to see, yeah. do I want to take this relationship to the next level? So your branding needs to look good. Uh, your company needs to be represented well. You want to make sure that you're prepared online before you get to the event because that's the first thing people do. Okay. Uh, at the event, uh, I'm going to say that it, networking is not about selling. And, and that's the biggest mistake that most people make. If, I, if I'm attending an event and I were to ask all 100 people in the room, how many of you here came to sell something today? Everyone would raise their hands. If I ask the next question, which is, how many of you came to buy something today? No one would raise their hand. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So we have a whole room full of people who are here to sell and no one's here to buy. And, and that's the networking disconnect. And so networking is not about selling. It's about developing relationships. It's about helping others. Networking is the long haul. It's, it's the long-term uh, thing that you're going to do that's going to benefit your business in the long term. And then lastly, uh, the third item I stress is the follow-up. Um, and, and it is the, I'm, I'm going to coin this, it's the FU of business. No one wants to do it, but it, uh, uh, it's the thing that's necessary that you should be doing. Follow up. And people remember those who do. And I think you need to follow up in a few ways. First of all, let's connect on social media. Uh, let's uh, send an email. Let me make a phone call. Uh, make some type of connection. Uh, offer to get coffee. Offer to uh, meet for lunch. Do something where people remember you. Yeah, excellent. So prepare before you go. Look at your online brand. Um, yeah. Networking is not about selling, which I want to come back to. And of course the F you follow up. Yeah. It's um, statistically it's five or more times, probably more than that. And, and to really deepen that connection. So yes. I, I get that network. Like when you're networking, you're not doing direct sales in that moment. Can networking turn into business and how do you view that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's really what we're all here for. Everyone wants to grow their business. Everyone wants to do more sales. And uh, it, is, it is the path to do so. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's, it's more relational and less transactional. And, and because it's not, uh, a lot of our sales that come online or through traditional marketing are transactional sales. They're one-time purchases. They're in the moment. It's going to happen. It's like, I need your service. I'm, I'm getting it now. But the relational business that you do through networking and the reason we spend time on it is because it creates an environment for that customer, for that client to stay with you for long term. And not only will they uh, stay with you long term, they'll spend more money with you because the trust is higher. They'll tell more people about you because that's how they came to you anyway, is through maybe a referral or an introduction from someone else in the room. And they'll want to do the same for you. 
Yeah. And so, so the, the long term of networking is going to be better results. Got it. So for those of you who are listening, so it's, it's a, it, business will still come from networking. It's yes. a little bit longer. And when you develop that relationship, Travis, I love what you're saying. It's, it's a, a longer term business relationship where you might get sales for years and years and referrals. And, and our, a lot of the networking I did, especially early in my business in California, I still have those relationships, you know, years and years later, I'm having a call with someone today who I met 15 years ago through networking. And we do have a higher level of trust because of the boards we've sat on together because of how we support it. And she's got a huge opportunity for me because of that connection. So I think it's, it's finding that fine line of, building relationships. And, and I think too, the other thing is a lot of referrals come through networking as well. It might not be direct sales, but they're, they're going to put you in front of people or they're going to put you on their show or they're going to, you know, fill in the blank. So here's, here's the million dollar question for you today. So get ready for this. Okay? Oh boy. If I wanted to double my sales this year through networking, what's your best advice on how I would do that? I want to say that uh, when you're networking, have a clear, uh, clear vision of who you need to meet. Ooh. So know what your target market is. When you walk into the room, know exactly who it is, what profession they're in. Uh, do your homework ahead of time. Prepare for the event. No, uh, if they publish the list of who's attending, then research that list and know uh, who you're going to meet beforehand. You can also even send them a message ahead of time and say, hey, I'm going to be at this event. I see you're going to be at this event. I'd love to connect with you. Uh, they'll remember that. You can be setting up appointments before you even arrive to the networking event so people are expecting you. Uh, but it really is about honing in on your target market. Uh, one of the things that we do in AGC that helps a little bit with that is that when you arrive, the, the name tags are color-coded based upon the industry. So when there's a room of 100 people, if I need to meet realtors, I can scan the room and spot the five realtors that are in the room based upon the color of their name tag. And so that allows me to make sure that I'm meeting the right people when I come. That's great. Excellent. Thank you. And that's a perfect place for us to start to wrap up because I, so for people who are listening who are thinking, I want to go to a networking event where there's color-coded name tags. Yes. That's phenomenal. So tell us a couple things. Tell us um, how, how can we get involved um, with AGC? And then maybe a little more to Travis about if I'm in a city where AGC is not yet, how do I find out more? Like if I want to start a group or tell us more. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, AGC is, is a unique organization. It's because one membership price gets you into every single event we do. Uh, in the Twin Cities in the past year, we did 80 events. We had 5,000 attendees through our doors at those 80 events. Wow, congratulations. So it is a crazy amount of people to, to be able to meet and have access to. There's no other place you can do that. And our vision is that you will build, we have a red carpet when you walk in the door. So our vision is that you, you will build, for one membership price, walk up a red carpet in any city in the country and in the world uh, for one membership price and walk into an event. So if I'm flying to Chicago, I can look on my app and say, oh, look, there's an AGC event tonight. I'm going to scan in and walk in the door. And so if you're in the Twin Cities, I want to invite you, first of all, to be my guest. Uh, first time to AGC is always free. You just go to our website, joinagc.com, and find the, the event that works for you, the one that fits in your schedule. Register as a non-member. It is free for you to check us out. Uh, the second time around, you can either pay the door fee and do it all a cart, or you can become a member. We, we say it's better to be a member, and I'll, I'll tell you why, and it's because we don't want you to have to pay door fees. They really add up. And also, we're finding members want to do business with members. I mean, there's more credibility. There's more trust. That I know I'm going to see you again. I know that, I, I, that you're probably going to do a good job for me because we're going to have to see each other. And, uh, but if you're in, in another city and ATC has not yet reached you, we're coming. Uh, we're planning to open five states this year, and if we're not there yet, and you're like, wow, I'd love to have an organization like this, we're looking for people who want to use an organization like this to build their credibility, to be the standout person. So maybe you're the realtor, maybe you're the insurance person in the community that really wants to build a community around what you're doing and have a platform to do it. We have it for you. 
join AC, AGC, sorry, join AGC.com. So if they want to find out, is there a, who should they email to find out um, if they want to bring AGC to their city? Sure. We'll, we'll do Travis at joinagc.com. Okay. Yeah, reach out to me directly. Uh, I, I'm very, very reachable. I, uh, I always you tell are. my members and guests that I'm, I'm a reachable person. And I like to be available to you. Yeah. And I just want to say that the event that I had the pleasure and the honor of speaking at was so professionally run. It, I love just how it was set up. I love that literally there's a red carpet. There is a red carpet. Everything was just, it was um, from start to finish, just amazingly professional and focused on taking your business to the next level. And I made some great contacts. So thanks again um, for having me as one of your speakers. And Travis, if, if there are speakers out there, is there a place to apply on your website? I'm so glad you asked that. Yes, uh, we have an application for our speakers. If you go to our event page or any one of our events, scroll all the way down the bottom, you're going to see a link to a speaker application and they can fill it out there. And uh, we do uh, six events a month in the Twin Cities. And as we're expanding around the country, uh, this is a good opportunity for you to fill out uh, a speaker application. Awesome. Travis, I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And we wish you and everyone at JD, AG, if I can say it, AGC, <laughs> the most phenomenal year that you can imagine and just continued success and growth. So thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, Ursula. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. So much fun. And thank you listeners all over the world. We love hearing from you. Email us contact at salescoachnow.com. If you have a topic or if you have a question you'd like me to talk about, as you know, I'm doing a lot more solo shows this year and we'd love to hear from you. Please leave us a uh, review on iTunes as well. That's really growing. Um, and upcoming, you're going to hear more. We're going to have a cool contest about um, when you put a review out there. So you hear about that, you can win some cool stuff. So thank you. Thanks for being part of our community. And we wish you your most epic month yet. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. And if you want to check out more videos, tap the screen right here.